God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. I was preaching somewhere recently and the men that were present, some were professors. Former secretary to federal government was there. Former deputy governors of CBA. People that should be my father. What do you tell them? Anything you read, they've read it. And they have lived this life three times your age so they have better experiences the only way you can talk and they will hear and say you did well is when you talk from a superior realm because the realm you now download from is the realm where the ancient of days himself dwells if you want to affect your generation hear me you must master how to abide that thing that chases you from your prayer room better go and fight with it that thing that chases you from god's presence if you want to be fruitful better go and declare war on that thing the next time you go to your prayer room, lock the door. Tell yourself, I'm not leaving here until after 10 hours. If I will die, I will die here. Because this is where my future is. Your future is not in America. It's on the altar. Look at what Psalm 91 said. Let's read it. Psalm 91 from verse 1. I know most of us pray this and it's good to pray it. But it's not telling you to pray this. It's telling you what your reality should be. He said, he that dwelleth, not, not, this is not a Christian, whoever that dwelleth. So if a Christian doesn't dwell, he will suffer. He that dwelleth, anybody who makes up his mind to abide, he said, in the secret place of the Most High, he now began to show you, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is not a prayer, he's telling you the outcome of his life. If you will dwell, he said, number one, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. That means God will become your fortress because you abide there. Go to the next verse. He says, Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So, whatever calamity is happening around you is not your business. He shall cover thee. He's giving you and he, he's telling you the, the, the outcome of dwelling. He shall cover thee with his feathers and order his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Go to the next verse. He said, thou shall not be afraid. Even fear will be removed from you. You won't know when. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. So they say people are dying. It's not your problem. There's epidemic. It's not your problem. No matter what the devil throws into the earth, you are already exonerated. He said, no, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, I have no business being robbed. I have no business being kidnapped. I have no business being raped. I have no business being attacked by any form of plague. He said, no, the destruction that wasted in noonday. All of this thing, you have no business with it. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. He said, it shall not come near you. Not because you are running away from it. It has enough intelligence to avoid you. And it's not because you are praying. You are not waking up every day and say, No, we for fashion. It doesn't come near you because you are already abiding. And why? He said, Only with thy eyes shall thou see and behold. So you'll be hearing the news, it will not touch you. And the reason is because of what? What he said in verse 1 and what he said in verse 9. He said, Because you have made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high your habitation if you stay with god there is no way you will not be fruitful if you like sell water if you like sell slippers if you like sell cars no matter what you do is not a factor you will prosper daddy read a, a scripture from psalm 1 a moment ago blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor is seated in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law does he meditate day and night. That's abiding. He said, it's like the tree planted by the rivers of living waters. It produces its fruit in his season. He doesn't miss. There's accuracy in productivity. He said, his leaves shall not wither. If you abide, see, Build capacity to abide, my sister. Build capacity to abide with God. 
It may be difficult at the beginning. Don't worry. Start. At a point, the Holy Ghost will now help you. The Bible said, widows brought their dead back to life. This is not for professors. You don't have to be educated. Just stay with God. Start talking to him from the level you know him. And watch what happens with your life after one month. After two months. After three months. You will not be able to explain it. I've taught these principles again and again. Sometimes I run into people on the plane. I was traveling the other time. I just sat and the man talked to me and said, Is this you? The first problem he had is that you look smaller than you look on TV. I said to him, maybe it's technology this is me he now shook me and said thank you god bless you this is a businessman he has applied all the strategies he knew both from the one he studied in economics and the one he studied from his master that mentored him nothing was working and i started teaching on staying with god he just stayed there one day he woke up he was going out he heard the voice and that voice started coming to him his investments the voice will tell him do this one invest here don't do this don't do this it was like following a, a compass following a navigator that's how business began to rise from capital of four million as he was talking to me he was already on over 900 million and he said he was traveling to broker another deal that day everything turned around and he couldn't believe it because that voice was always there but he couldn't hear it the earth was too noisy so when god spoke the voice was choked in other voices god's voice is not loud it's only distinct and you must train yourself to pick it and the way to train yourself is to abide because when he comes he comes in a still small voice many people have not stayed with god so the noise of the world overshadows the voice that should lead them to their productivity build capacity build capacity to abide every day one hour two hours three hours stay there and begin to grow in it tell yourself i grow now because i can silence my spirit in god's presence for six hours see how your life will turn around you will be shocked i know the place of prophecy and i'll talk about it but i'm telling you things that should define your life it will make prophecy work faster god is not running with the world you have to wait for him number three you want to be fruitful humility matthew chapter 5 verse 5 i'm showing you why our generation is struggling he said blessed are the meek he said for they shall inherit the earth so when a man becomes humble he doesn't only have what he labors for even the labor of others is ascribed to him you know, Jesus said, others have labored, I have sent you into their harvest. So, there's a possibility of inheriting already made blessings in this world. One of the ways of entering into it is by humility. God is looking for humble people to give them inheritances. But the problem is, most of us are too full of ourselves. Because the world has taught us that we must package. And the idea of packaging is to exalt yourself and act and present yourself the way God has not presented you. And this is why many fail. In James 4, verse 6 and 10, you will see this scripture. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He said, in due season, God will exhort you. He will exhort you. God is in the business of exhorting men. But one criteria he will look out for is humility. You think why Moses was so great? In Exodus 7 verse 1, God told Moses, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Why was he so big? Numbers 12 verse 3, he was the meekest of all men on earth. So God was the one who exalted him. Most of us are too high-minded for the blessing that is coming. You don't have anything yet. You are behaving like a peacock. Is it when God gives you authority? <laughs> authority to bind a nation. Is, you think he will take that risk? capacity listen tell yourself eh? i refuse to be proud see sometimes pattern your life to demonstrate humility when people want to show themselves you go down teach yourself how to be humble and be marking your own script be marking your own script don't think you are bigger than your brother if he thinks he's bigger encourage him god bless you my prayer is for you to be bigger when you want to shake somebody and he wants to prove that he's bigger than you, he's older than you, bend down. 
Don't, I will make it easy for you. Bend down. Salute him. It won't take anything from you. But the thing is that God is watching. God is watching. In the day of exhortation, is the person with a low head that he will exhort. The one who is standing like this will go down. Capacity for fruitfulness. We are out of time. I'll just list the other three. Go and look at it from scripture. If you do these things, sir, there is no way you will not be fruitful. Peter was speaking about some of these things in 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 6 to verse 8. He said if you do these things, you must prosper. It's not possible that you will fail. I'm telling you, you must prosper. Build capacity in the area of humility. Refuse pride. Anywhere you act proud, go back to God and cry and say, help me. And if in pride, you were arrogant to somebody, go back and apologize. You are training yourself. That's how you enlarge your capacity. You enlarge your capacity by telling God to help you and by quickly taking responsibility for every arrogant behavior. Even we who are preachers, sometimes I say some things. I come back and say, sorry, that thing I said, don't, it's, I'm, I'm a proud man. God is helping me. Please bear with me. I won't say it again. As you do it like that, you have put something in your consciousness. The next time that thing comes, you will kill it. Because what will determine whether you enter your next level is the degree of your brokenness. David knew this. The difference between David and Saul was humility. If not, Saul would have been a better king. He was a warrior from his youth. But David was a broken man. The moment you rebuke David, dear and dear, he will tear his clothes and repent. Paul will tell you, people are watching now. If you must correct me, correct me inside. Come inside now. Why will you rebuke me in the public? He's not interested in taking the correction. It's what people think. And that was how he tore his own nation from his own hand. Samuel lamented over Saul because he loved the man. And God said, I have rejected him. Not because he's not a good warrior, but because his pride won't let me walk with him. Hmm. Capacity. The fourth capacity you must build is thankfulness. Some people cannot be fruitful because they are ungrateful. You help somebody, deliver him from somewhere or from a situation. When he is now delivered, he comes and says, Hi, that little help you gave me the other day. That little help. So the help is now little. Next time you will not see that little help. You do something for them, they say, I'm grateful. You know, that's how it is. They are now showing gratitude. They have suddenly discovered that they have American accent. Oh, the other day, the other day, the other day. They come and say, thanks for the other day. Thanks for the other day. Next time, that other day will last for one year. I'm telling you why we are not fruitful. Because sometimes, just one help will shift the whole business. But the person who should help you will refuse. Because you don't, you don't qualify for it. It's a waste to help an ungrateful man. It's a waste. And that's why most of them are not grateful. You help somebody, make, you make somebody, the very day he's announced, that day you become his enemy. That's the world we live in. Ingratitude. And when God sees that, God will avoid you first. In Jeremiah 13 verse 19, the Bible said, Out of them shall proceed the voice of thanksgiving and the sound of them that makes merry. And he said, I will multiply them. The moment you become thankful, multiplication is natural. Look at the life of Jesus. Everywhere Jesus multiplied things, the first thing he did was, I thank you, O Father. John chapter 6 from verse 6 to 11. Even when Jesus brought the dead back to life, it was thanksgiving. Father, thank you because you always hear me. Lazarus, comfort. The key to productivity, the key to fruitfulness is thankfulness. So if you want to be fruitful, build that capacity. Somebody does something for you that is very small. This is not politics. Brother, I just want you to know I'm grateful. Thank you so much. What you did for me meant so much to me. I don't take it for granted. Thank you and may the Lord bless and increase you. As you are thanking him, you say, wait. I was thinking of doing this one, but I didn't. I called you, it didn't go through, it didn't call. 
He called you in his heart. Now that you have shown gratitude, take more. Take more. Take more. Build that capacity. Listen. Even if you, are, you, want, you want to enter a door, somebody waits and say, enter. Turn. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. From very little things, develop it. So that you become sincerely grateful. It will open doors for you and it will increase you. Go and look at those who are really wealthy and making impact. You will see them very grateful. Is the poor man that has nothing that thinks you want to intimidate him. Is it that smart thing he did for me that he thinks the whole world should... Uh -huh. That's the problem. A rich man, a big man has no problem saying, oh, thank you so much, I'm grateful. It's a poor man that always has challenge. Imagine that man. Just because he gave me a lift, he thought that I'm not saying anybody should control your life because he helps you. But I'm saying, be deliberate in being grateful if you want to be fruitful. The last two is giving and prophecy. Go and study it. The Holy Ghost will give you understanding. In Proverbs 11, 25, he said, The liberal soul shall be made fat. He said, Him that watereth shall by himself be watered unto you will never see any crop grow except as you first of all scatter seedlings. If you don't scatter, nothing will grow. The people who are not productive, they always want to keep everything for themselves. That's why they remain small. They think it's wisdom. Keep all you, keep all you can. I be can all you get and keep it. Or how do they put it now? They gather everything. The Bible says it doesn't work like that. Give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. You don't know the evil that will come upon the earth. He said, in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. Some people are so stingy that even in church, they are looking for justification why they should give to God. This is God. Oh. The reason they are debating is because they don't know why. And you see them accuse. I know there are pastors who have bastardized this doctrine. But there are many people, they are attacking every pastor. All these pastors are taking money. It's not about pastors, it's their stinginess. Leave pastor out of it. The house gear in your house. Which soap do you buy for her? When was the last time you gave to a poor person? See, people who give have no problem with the subject. When you find people arguing, debating, quarreling, and accusing, is first of all stinginess. It pains them that he leaves them. And God is also included. They come to service. When you are praying, be blessed. They say, this is a man of God. When you are preaching, God has blessed us. Jesus died for your sins. They say, preach Christ. This is the gospel. When it has to do with God gave you, they receive it. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. They say, these are the preachers we are looking for. They are preaching the gospel. Meanwhile, they don't know that this gospel is God gave you. Jesus died for you. The moment the gospel now demands responsibility, either pray, go for evangelism, or give, they say they have come again. And they think they can be fruitful. No, it doesn't work like that. Jesus said, give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. See what you do. Build your capacity. See, including my offering. When God started training me, I started giving 10 naira. As a university student, it was difficult. God told me, give 10 naira. I'm going to, to church. Money is in my pocket because I don't know how to say no, God. I remove that trouser and hang it. We are another trouser. I come to church. I say, there's no money in my pocket, Lord. Next time I will give. You started from, all of us started from somewhere. But the Holy Ghost didn't stop. No man of God coerced me to give. And I teach my people, give as led, give by revelation and give based on maturity. I don't coerce anybody. But see, if your Christianity is sincere, it's the Holy Ghost himself that will trouble you to give. Because your productivity is tied to it. From my offering, from 10 naira, 20 naira, 100 naira, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000, and we are growing. This is offering. I'm not talking tight. Or first fruit. And you see one person is so big, you are wondering. You say, God, why did you favor this person? I'm here too. He's seen all of us. You are the one who determines what you get. Even the widow gave, Jesus didn't forbid it. 
In fact, Jesus commended her for giving all. He said, this one gave more than them all. Because she gave all she has. Capacity. Listen, build your capacity. My offering must increase. My tithe will increase. My, my first fruit will increase. Build it. Be deliberate. And don't only give in church. Give to orphanages. Give to the poor. Anywhere there's an opportunity to give, be the first. If you train yourself like that, you'll be shocked. The little we have, you have, we multiply. He said, the libra soul shall be made fat. Him that watereth shall by himself be watered unto. Tomorrow I'll begin from prophecy. Bow your heads, let's pray. <laughs> Ask the Lord tonight, Father, the grace for enlarged capacity, give it to me. I can minister in the spirit. I can minister in the prophetic. I can stir the anointing. But you need to know these rudiments so that prophecy can work. I know the excellency of the prophetic. With the prophetic, dry bones can turn to a great army. I know it. But build this capacity so that what God does for you will not be a fluke. It's something you can replicate anywhere, anytime. You leave Abuja to Sokoto, you are fruitful. You leave Sokoto to Namibia, you are fruitful. You leave Nigeria to Zambia, you are fruitful. You leave to Cameroon, you are fruitful. You leave to Ghana, you leave to Togo, you leave to America. Anywhere you go, you are fruitful. Because now, your capacity is enlarged. That's how these things work. Can you ask for that grace in the next one minute? Father, increase my capacity. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai That is compelling it. There's a law. There are many stingy preachers. Even God, they don't give. They come and teach you about giving. They don't give. Give your first fruit. Give your tithe. Give your offering. The preacher will not give. And then he's wondering why he is struggling. Nobody is giving to him. This thing does not exonerate anybody. Anybody that wants to be fruitful must become a giver. Can you ask God for this capacity? Listen. When I come here tomorrow, I will minister in the spirit. But I don't want oil to come on your life for no reason. I want that anything God brings into your realm, you can keep it. You will not lose it. You can keep it. Because now you have the capacity. I want to pray for us now. If you build these capacities, no season, no territory can defy your productivity. Father, in the name of Jesus, the grace for enlarged capacity. Let it be released on everyone hearing me tonight. The grace for capacity enlargement that provokes fruitfulness. Let it be released on everyone hearing me tonight. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost every force making you small they go down now. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, receive capacity enlargement. In the name of Jesus, become a joy of many generations. May the strength of the Almighty mantle you from tonight. As you step out of this meeting, receive encounters that will shift you 
Receive encounters that will change your story. Receive encounters that will enlarge your capacity.